Hey, hey, hi everybody. Here we go. We're live on YouTube. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hi. Hello. It's me, Jennifer, Little Metal Foxes. <laughs> and Julia, also from Little Metal Foxes. And Helen. Also from Little Metal Foxes. Awesome. Hey, everybody. All right. So um, today uh, we're going to be talking about um, engraving balls. Boop. And, and, other, and other options. And other options uh, because there are some great solutions besides engraving balls. But um, I know a lot of people kind of want to know, you know, one, you know, what they are, why anyone needs them. Um, if you're not doing traditional engraving, you know, what mm -hmm. can you use it for? Um, you know, how much should you spend? I've got one of my other, uh, my, my traditional big graving ball. This thing's like a, an eight pound bowling ball. Uh, <laughs> it's heavy. It's, it's a big old, big old heavy thing. Um, but there are also some, and these are very expensive and they're great for engraving, but there's also smaller options. GRS makes a small option. That's really good. This is, uh, like a, um, Amazon engraving ball that I got that I really like a lot. Um, that's very similar to the GRS, but I think one of the things that a lot of people, uh, get confused about when they get something like an engraving ball, or they're not sure what the engraving ball is and does is what all the little parts are for and what they do, because most engraving balls will come with a, a little set like this. And it's just like, you know, oh my God, what, what are all those for? There you go. So, um, you know, they come with, you know, all kinds of little, uh, pins and screws and clamps and uh, pegs and holder. And I actually added uh, a couple of screws to mine because this one has little screw holes as well as peg holes. So this makes it easy if I want to screw something in and hold it down. This can work really well. But um, but what you know what do all these little things do and why do you need them? Um, well, most engravers, I'm just going to say real quick, most people that are using these for engraving or stone setting or which are pretty much the two things that they're using them for, um, use these to hold and position the piece. So some of these, like these little pins, can hold things on the inside of a ring or the outside. So just depending on what you're doing, some of these are good for the inside or the outside. Some of them have like little uh, inset curved surfaces or flat faces that just give you lots and lots of options for positioning and holding things. Um, some of them are higher, some of them are lower, just depending on what you're working on. Um, and I like this kind of holding device because it has two different sizes. So if you're holding something like a coin or doing things like hobo nickels, these can be great for, um, for holding flat things as are these. And these also have like a little groove on one side to help hold things. And they're taller pins and shorter pins and even uh, like ring clamp holding devices. So there's lots of different options for actually holding things. And you just have to kind of like pin things together. And as you do that, I'll put in a couple of tall pins. So you, so you should show us how the cone shaped ones work. Cause I think those are one of the ones that confuse yeah. people. Yeah. So when you're trying to hold something with an engraving ball, you can put the pins in like so, mm -hmm. and then you can use, uh, it usually comes with uh, different kinds of uh, keys that can open and close it. But these basically, all this is, is a vice. That's all it is. It's a vice mm -hmm. as adjustable holders. And so if you're holding something that is, let's say, I'm just going to grab the first thing I can see on my bench. Um, so if you want to hold something that's kind of, you know, maybe tall and round, uh, and you're trying to sort of get things organized, you've got lots of little places that you can move things to hold on to something that is um, kind of an odd shape, let's say. So if I want to hold on to something that's an odd shape, I can move these pins around until I get it. Here we go. Closed up. Oops. <laughs> you, you moved out of the frame there, Jennifer. There we go. There we go. So you can kind of move your pins around until you get something held where you want it and then yeah and you just sort of like adjust your pins to make things fit 
one of the the interesting things about these is that one of the jaws usually will swivel and so it gives you uh, a different way to sort of connect and hold things so if you're trying that's to sort cool. of hold something that's a little bit unusual wait what do you mean one will swivel one usually look at that what she's doing right there oh yeah one of the jaws will swivel so how do you lock it into place well it locks into place as you close your uh your vice so if, you oh. have, if your pin's in there and as you're closing it it just sort of closes to clamp onto the piece so if the piece gotcha is open, right nice so right 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 so then um, you could clamp something like that right uh this one doesn't swivel this one doesn't swivel key. so it just has like one holding device rather than two that keeps it steady so interesting of, okay so that's an interesting that's cool. difference between the large and small engraving walls yeah then this particular mm -hmm. version just doesn't have that that swivel ability you know it just doesn't mm -hmm. well that's the, probably the off-brand amazon one it is yeah yeah so this one was about a hundred bucks with mm -hmm. the, with the stand and with all the parts that came with it um and this is great if i'm doing something where i am doing engraving um as you're engraving one of the things that you'll notice is that you know you want to have something that does have a heavy base yeah so that when you're working you are not just engraving into the ball but you are this is spinning so you want this to be able to move to your hand so that you have the flexibility and this will move so you're not having to twist your arm all the way around and move around right right you're twisting the ball you're changing to make the ball a curved cut rather than twisting your hand Right, right. So you're actually moving. It's like if you were drawing and moving the paper to your pen, right? right. So you're sort of like working with it that way. Right. So your so hand stays more stationary, right? Pushing the graver into the metal, and then the metal is moving into your hand. Right. And sometimes you don't need that. Sometimes you're setting a stone and you want it to be very solid, and they almost all have a locking pin that locks them in place so it won't move, and they have a very heavy leather or rubber base usually that they're sitting on mm -hmm. um, and you can get you know non-skid rubber bases or little donuts or uh little washers or add some silicone you know to make these a little more uh sticky you know to mm -hmm. steady but these are great and it's nice because these are very fluid i like this one a lot because it is very fluid so when you're working and doing engraving it really does move really beautifully so that's kind of a nice thing about that one but well, that one doesn't have a lock right um it does yeah it does oh, okay sorry oh i see it's on the side so gotcha. i don't want that one as well but um one really great solution is this little guy so if you have um a, a little vice that you can use um this works great it's it also comes with a handle and will tighten um but you can unscrew the handle from this like that and put it in a vice which is nice mm -hmm. yeah and this also if what you want is a steady stable location this is not going to work as a as a replacement for the wivel action of an engraving ball but it will work this one won't but if you have a universal vice that does have that, mm -hmm. that universal sort of motion it does give you a lot more options okay um, but you might ask jennifer you don't have pins in this one well, this does have the ability to put pins in. It looks just like this one does. Mm -hmm. Thanks to uh, Chris at Lion Punch Forge, who sort of gave me this tip, that um, he uses a, a thermal plastic and pushes it down into the little uh, holes. And this allows me to hold parts while I'm working um, and setting stones and doing engraving. And I can pop things out. So for three-dimensional forms, this is really nice. And this can take the place of like traditional pitch like this. Um, this is a uh, like a pine resin and uh, beeswax uh, mix that's used mm -hmm. for forming things. So using it for uh, chasing and repoussé, engraving and stone setting. Um, but you also have the shellac, which is traditional. Right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if people would like to see that. Um, yeah. So let me over here and i can show you this you share my screen yeah so i bought this stuff probably 20 years ago 
This very early on in my trajectory as a jeweler, this is orange flake shellac, and I bought it from Rio. And this is what it looks like. It's little flakes. It's just what it says. It's orange flake shellac. And you use it essentially the same way you use thermoplastic. You have to melt it, right? So this is a shellac block that I made. Um, I actually just used a little wooden piece of wood, and then I had a little piece of um, very thin copper that I wrapped around the wood so that then I could layer. Here, I'm just going to take the handle off of this and make it easier. So, you know, I put some of the shellac in here and then heated it very gently. I think I used a heat gun with this until it melted into a solid thing. And then I took this off. And this was the traditional, it was this stuff or it was pitch that is what setters would use. So they would either use a shellac stick or they would use pitch. So if you were carving, if you were like filing a curb chain or something, you would set you would have the, the, this stuff all along the edge of a board and you would set your chain down into that. Or if you were setting stones, you would warm this up, press the item into the sticky shellac, let it cool and then do your setting and then warm it up and pull it out. The thermoplastics have entirely replaced shellac for this purpose as a setting medium. I mean, I really think pretty much everybody now is probably using thermoplastic rather than using shellac. And you do have to be careful. It does say, um, warning, you know, you're not supposed to breathe it, right? So, you know. Uh, However, you know, one of the things that's kind of interesting about shellac is that some grades of shellac are actually like a food grade and they're used for coating things like candy. Hmm. Yeah. Yes, I don't. I don't think that. I don't think that's this. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, but and yeah, then this it's... one, I just put it in. I just put the little block. This is basically the same object Jennifer has. Mine doesn't have thermoplastic on it, right? So the piece that you have, you've put thermoplastic and it's pushed down into the holes. I just, you know, didn't have it with that, so I was right. able to do it like this. And then same, but the same thing. You can put the object in there and then hold it in place. Right. Um, the other thing I have here is I have some examples of other kinds of thermoplastic. So like you can get this stuff called polymorph, which is it's in these little balls. I got this from Amazon and it, you know, easy to use, reusable, super strong, right? You just warm it up in uh, 140 degree water. And then these are kind of other versions of that. So once you've used this stuff, the polymorph, this is what it looks like. Right. And then to soften it, you just put it in hot water again and and you can reuse it. This is a it's essentially a shellac stick that has this stuff on it. Right. So this was a little piece that's sitting in here. I just you push the warm the plastic or melt, soften the plastic and then push it over. And then you just dip this in hot water and then you take your piece out. This is some jet set. And then this is um, what's called thermal lock right? The GRS thermal lock. So all of these, you can see how they're all in flat pieces. Whenever you're using this stuff, when, after you've softened it, when you're getting ready to put it away, make it into big flat sheets because it makes it much easier to soften it again, <laughs> right? If it's a big clump, it's harder to use. This stuff is fairly expensive. This is the GRS thermal lock. Um, and this is the one that you can soften in the microwave, I believe. Isn't that right, Jennifer? Uh, I think so. Yeah. One yeah. Of them. Um, so, and this is the moldable plastic pellets, the polymorph. This is the GRS thermal lock. This is the jet set. This was very old. This is jet set basic, I think, that had the ceramic um, stuff in it. I got this from Rio, but you can see the colors a little different. This is more of a white as opposed to the kind of more plastic color. Uh, but they all basically work the same way, right? They're all just modern versions of the shellac stick right yeah, i heat my polymorph actually with a heat gun yeah i do too yeah. yes and actually a heat gun is a really good solution for that because um if you're heating it with a torch um you're you're running the risk of burning stuff and you really don't want to do that and you can get like those little tiny heat guns now like you can get the little small ones that work really fast you it looks like you have one that has a handle on it that's more like a hair dryer or no, maybe not 
Huh? It's like a glue gun stand. So when you're when you, when you put it on the desk, it's not touching anything. Ah, oh, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, but yes, a heat gun is definitely the way to go because it, um, you don't run the risk of burn. And and actually, a heat gun is the way to go for pitch as well, right? I mean, traditionally people would have used a torch, but nowadays. A heat gun is a way more gentle heat source and you're much less likely to burn your pitch. Uh, you don't want to, if you burn the pitch, you definitely want to remove the pitch, the burnt pitch from the pitch pop because it will make marks on your, it's harder than the pitch. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so it will, it can damage the, your work. You know, it won't respond the way normal pitch will because it's burnt. It's like charcoal, right? So. So there you go. You're melting it down a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and one of the cool things about it is you can see when this is uh, softer because it, goes, it gets clearer. Yeah. yeah. It gets clear. So I can see, you know, what I've got to work with and then I can get it kind of, you know, piled up using something like a, a you know, a spatula, a uh, um, like a, a paint spatula kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I love that you're just making your metal ruler do double duty there. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's real warm. It's, you know, real toasty at the moment. But once I get it, you know, kind of warmed up and not, I don't want it sticky. I just want mm -hmm. it, you know, warm and moldable. And then I can take my piece and put it in, you know, to hold it however I want it. Um, the One of the advantages, too, to the, um, and let it cool back down. When it's white, I know it's cool again. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the advantages is that it... Um, uh is a lot more durable than shellac so mm -hmm. that's definitely one of the advantages to this and it also just peels right off you know if you warm it up you can peel it off and just reuse it mm -hmm. um, shellac can be um is chemical solvent uh as well as some some versions of it are water soluble as well so it doesn't hold up if you're you know working on something that needs to be a little tougher because um it can crack and break also mm -hmm. if you are a uh, vegetarian um you may not want to use shellac because it is uh it is a bug uh by an animal product. Product. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's an animal but yes exactly yeah the, um you can get the thermoplastic you know any kind of thermoplastic will work um some are softer and more flexible than others one of the ones that i have here is besides the jet set is uh, just these thermal plastic cards, which are kind of nice because you can kind of cut them down or shape them um, a little more easily than trying to, you know, start from beads like the, the jet set. Mm -hmm. so, and there's, I don't know if you mentioned this already, but there's two kinds of jet set. There's- I didn't, but yes, you should say that. There's a jet set basic and the basic is what I have on here right now. It's just kind of a, white and then it goes to clear and then the other one is a uh jet set ballistic which has a um more of a uh, like a almost a pumice in it so it has like ceramic dust or something in it doesn't it yeah it has ceramic dust or pumice in it that makes it a little more um uh has it has more tooth to it yeah i think that's what i have because i think i was showing people the one i have is kind of whiter it looks more yeah. like plaster rather yeah. than having that slightly translucent character of plastic. Yeah. So some people to get them, you know, to get this, the little pellets uh, into a little ball, um, you're usually like warming it up in hot water. Mm -hmm. so all the little beads are clear and then you sort of clump it together and you can kind of mold it and use it with the, um, the ballistic or the tougher stuff. It is, uh, it never really goes completely translucent or transparent like the basic does. Correct. But, but it does, it is super durable and is, um, uh, yeah, anyway, super durable and just has a little bit different instead of like a, a shiny plastic finish is more mm -hmm. of a shiny finish. So, you know, either one works, you know, for what you're doing. And the nice thing is once you buy this, it pretty much will last you a lifetime because, you know, it's reusing. You just keep reusing it, yeah. Right. Right. When you want to take your piece off, you just can, you know, warm it up, pop it off. And if you just warm the piece, like heat the piece, you know, kind of spotting on that piece with your heat gun, you can peel that off and you don't have to warm up the whole entire piece again. Right. 
um, some people, because this does remain kind of movable and soft for a little bit of time, it does kind of uh, replicate the, um, the surface of pitch. Um, so some people really kind of like to use thermal plastics as a substitute for pitch as well. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but, um, but there's lots of little, you know, holding devices that can work for this. But, you know, I know that you know, these can be really confusing for holding. And, but basically it is like pegs for uh, a 3D device. <laughs> basically, these are mm -hmm. pegs for a device, right? How do you use the little cone shaped ones? these yeah uh, like ring clamps so these would go into the uh let me see where's the guy here goes out so these would go into this one like so and it works like a uh you know, like a ring clamp so why are the back ends angled well you can do it either way so you can hold it from the inside or the outside you have to so lift it up a little bit so you're in the camera oh sorry there so you go. Can kind of slide that in and then slide your ring on so you can hold it from the out the inside uh rather than the outside so oh okay there you go but they also just sort of it gets them out of the way as well so when you're you know working on it um they're not in your uh not in the way while you're working so. oh okay but yeah there we go you have to hold it up again. Yeah. Here. So it acts like a little ring clamp, basically. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So when you tighten it down, it just holds your ring right in there. And these usually have um, very soft jaws. They have cork, leather, or some sort of plastic material in here mm -hmm. just to sort of, you know, keep things from sliding around. But if you've got, you know, something that you're trying to do on the, you know, hold it from the inside rather than the outside. You can slide your ring on mm -hmm. and it's down and i'd probably use uh you know a little bit of something soft on the inside as well but that way i can hold my ring we'll push it up on to this part, bit and hold it there cool so, i guess yeah. i thought that they like like the the, the the small ends of those came together somehow and i was like but how would that work <laughs> right you could totally use that in too so if you needed something like a like smaller end to hold something yeah you totally use that side but they're so far apart that they're just you know yeah um, you'd have a hard hard time getting this one probably to open up to where you could do that but it would give you um yeah i don't even know that i could position it that way <laughs> and the pegs for the for that because all that whole set of pegs came with the small one the holes yeah. are not the right size so you can't use those on your big one can you no, this has a different set that goes with it. This that has a totally different set. Right, because yeah. the the spacing is different. Yes. Yeah. Even the single pegs won't fit in there. Say what? Even the single pegs won't fit in the big one. No, the the diameter of the hole is a different size. This oh. is a smaller hole than this is. Interesting. Um, okay. So this does have a different uh, hole size. Um. But like I said, one of the things that's kind of interesting about these is you can see some of the holes are threaded. Mm -hmm. So I can, I just went to the hardware store and got some uh, brass screws. So if I need to sort of hold something down and position it, I can actually, and I can even cut these down if I need to, if I need something a little shorter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you and need like just, a little a copper plate, you can punch some holes yeah. or so piece of just, wood. Or... Yeah, and use it that way. And you can, you know, add little washers to these or sure. uh, sleeves to these as well so that they're not damaging your piece. So, yeah. So on some of mine, I have a, uh, let me go with that. Okay. Um, you can actually use like a, a heat shrink tubing on mm -hmm. uh, so that they have a little bit of a softer surface. So those work pretty well. Did you um, put the heat shrink tubing on those or did they come with that? Those came like they that, came but I know that I can replace them with that heat shrink. And mm -hmm. you can wrap those with uh, like rubber tape. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, I mean, all these. Plastic things, dip. Yeah, plastic dip. Absolutely. So you can use. Or the tough break stuff, stuff, the polyurethane. Oh, yeah. Sheet. Uh, mm -hmm. Just using the uh, thermal plastic on the pegs works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that would work too. So if I've got. 
if you've got, you know, you can use the pegs together in different ways to um, to hold stuff where you need it to. So you don't have to use like the same peg on both sides. You can use a combination of pegs to hold whatever it is you're, you're working with. Um, and, you know, everybody's got work that's different sizes and different shapes. And that's the whole point of these mm -hmm. is to give you those kinds of options. So if I need to, you know, hold a ring on the inside, I can use, you know, different pegs to do that. And they're different heights because, you know, some things will get in the way if they're not, if they're too tall. Um, the nice thing about these two is that you can, um, you can actually make your own pegs just using uh, a piece of wire or rod that's the same size. And you can mm -hmm. make different kinds of holders that might be, you know, bent out to hold a larger piece um or you know shaped in different ways so that they kind of come together to hold things like a bowl uh while you're trying to do something so you can use this to as a vice to hold all kinds of things and make your own uh little uh pegs cool there you go yeah i've seen some sets that have like these long like yeah they're like a yeah they're they're yeah they're sort of a like like something that would hang off a pegboard you know yeah. And and I know somebody got, someone was asking about, someone got one at like a swap meet or something. They're like, what does all this stuff do? <laughs> like, ask Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, no, I've got some of those here. Hang on just a second. Let me, it's back on here. Yeah. So, um, yes, those that I'm talking about look like this. So this set, yes. So this set has like these pieces for my big engraving ball. Mm, so these okay. all fit in this one, boop, boop, like so. Mm -hmm. um, so these are really good. But yeah, sometimes you have, you know, pieces like this that are designed so that you can put pieces in here, right? Oh, you remove the, right, the okay. One. You remove the, the, the other plate. Right. And then you can hold something really big. Yes, like a plate or a ball. So this opens and closes up and these, you know, can clamp on to whatever it is. Right, right, yeah. right. So, right. Yeah, Absolutely so cool. I don't use these very often, but you know, for people that are doing larger, you know, like sure. bowl engraving and things, and this actually has a little, I can see some shellac from many years. From many years ago. <laughs> many years ago, somebody was using on that. Um, but yeah, you know, there's um, all kinds of possibilities. And this one, yeah, I was very fortunate to find this one. Um, but yeah, this one was sort of has its adjustable part here. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, and then it can boop, 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 boop. And I've got, a, uh, actually, this one's really, this is a rubber base and I have a, um, a felt base that allows it to swivel a little more easily mm -hmm. so if i'm doing like an engraving thing and i need to have this kind of movability mm -hmm. the rubber one really holds it very steady um right. while the plastic allows it to move around Flicker. yep and the uh the um so this is like yeah a leather rubber sort of base but the uh the felt one allows it to move like this does so yeah that's, that's an old tool because i'm looking at the the holders for your base for your your little bits that go in and they're all wood or oh this yeah oh yeah and you know oh yeah this one's probably from the um the 50s probably right wow. it's old this is a really old veger uh vice so is that a good brand or is that just veger um yeah veger is good they're still I don't know anything still about them as far as i know Fine. Vigor is still around as far as I know. How's it how's it spelled? V I G O R. Oh. How do you pronounce that vigor? Like, you know, vigorous. Yes. Yeah. So this one has like all kinds of little like triangle shapes and so on. But you know, I think, you know, if you you know, these aren't so specifically like like these aren't specifically for a particular a thing yeah right. they're if you look at them more as like optional holding devices right that, that are movable if i've got something that is um like a bracelet for example 
these would be great because they have like the curves mm -hmm. in them and so i could put like a bracelet in and open this up oops excuse me and then open this up put my bracelet in and then i could you know clamp it down and then it's not going to mm -hmm. hurt it because it's going to have like those little little round things to support it while i'm working right on it. right right so yeah i love that, that you know like the 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 l-shaped or the boop, boop, boop things the hanger things it's like no you just have to take the whole part thing off. That has the holes in it <laughs> yeah yeah and then so, do the underneath part yeah so there's you know lots of different like parts to this and they're going to have different sizes but if you want to let's say make your own pegs for something like this where you want mm -hmm. to do something like you know like these guys that would fit in here mm -hmm. just you would go to the hardware store get a piece of steel rod or bronze rod that mm -hmm. fits these holes and then you can make you know a device that fits sure. in here and holds that well yep. yeah and i did get from uh one of the folks that does 3d printing um, you can even 3D print, you know, different pegs. These actually fit into this one. Don't know they fit in. Oh, they fit into both. Yay. So it's small enough to fit into this one too. But these are just little 3D printed pegs that I got that are in a variety of shapes and sizes. So they can hold and they're all plastic, kinds of things. so they're nice and soft. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So just little, little plastic oh, that's parts. Great. Yeah. So there's yeah, a few different sizes and shapes that are in here. Um, I don't remember who I got these from, but um but i was like oh well that's kind of those are clever yeah. <laughs> those are clever so yeah so that's what those are for but i think you know if you are in a place where you're kind of like i need i can't figure out how to hold this while i'm working on it and setting stones right. on it and i don't want to damage it and you know a vice isn't you know you can't just you know stick it into something like this because it's the jaws are limited mm -hmm. and you need something that's going to be a, like fingers that are going to hold it Exactly. That's what that's what these are. These allow right. you to have like little fingers so you can hold things in place, right? Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Ta da! Yay! But I do like this one too because it's with the handle. Mm -hmm. If you're using your traditional bench pin, you know this will sort of like fit into the bench pin, so it you can kind of work a little mm -hmm. more free handed. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so just good holding devices, but. That's what all the little pegs do. That's what they're for. Um, don't, you know, limit yourself to thinking of them as, um, again. Or something specific. Or something specific. They are tools to hold different parts in different ways. Like your like, fingers. Your fingers aren't just for yeah. one thing. Yeah. So you might need something that like grips on one side that kind of comes over something like your thumb. So for something like that, you might want to have something that's shaped you know, mm -hmm. with a little, with a little grip. So you've got like a, a thumb grip on one side, but you just need something to like hold it into that spot on the other. So having, you know, something that's, you know, little, little pins that right. can just it push it in. On the other side. Yeah. 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 So it's just, yeah. Think about like holding something with your hand, you know, you might need like, you know, four pins on one side and one pin on the other to mm -hmm. be able to go ah, and hold something like together. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all it does. So it just is a vice All right. that is manipulatable. Well, I don't remember which student it was who asked us about that, but we know now we can say, go to this Tooltip Tuesday. And you Absolutely. Can see all Absolutely. The yeah. And, and, you know, thanks again to Chris, because, you know, I had used thermal plastic, like to hold the part and put it into a vice before, but I'd never thought about using it just like, just right to at make it at the top of the, of the body yeah yeah, yeah. And and then, honestly these things are inexpensive enough yeah that you could get you a get couple multiple. and you could get <laughs> one that's just dedicated that has the thermoplastic on it right um or, and you can even you could even have because yours has just one big piece of thermoplastic is on top of the whole right. thing you could also have a piece of thermoplastic on one half and a piece of thermoplastic on the other half so that this oh yeah move. you could still oh, yeah, yeah. so know, it acts as protective jaws absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely exactly so um i think they come with what four pins isn't that what yours yes yeah, so this one see how it has the little plastic ring when you when you close it then you can lift the little plastic ring off and then the little pins can come out yeah the little plastic ring is just there so that the pins don't fall out well and that's a really good illustration of how it can hold the ring from an inside right right exactly 
Yeah. So if you're working around something that, you know, you've got a hold from the inside, you can do that too. Yeah. Though um, there's less reason to, I mean, I guess it depends if you're trying to work on the edge, but and yeah, it just depends this, on what this little thing on. is just to hold the pins in place so that they don't, yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. fall out. Fall out. Um, but the, you know, if you need to customize some pins, mm -hmm. you can get that size rod and just cut it down and shape them to what you need them to be. So if you lose a pin, tool making, pins, if, go you've to the taken, store. if you've taken the tool making class, just get the, the same, you can use the same tool steel and you can, you know, cut edges yeah. and do whatever you want and smooth it off. And you would don't even need to temper it or harden what, it. How right? big are those pins, off. Julia? I was going to check and see. The pins in here, let me see. They are, oh, Chris, I just watched his, Chris's uh, video about his Black Friday thing, and he's got some some of these gauges that he has uh, blind Laser. punch forge engraved on that he's giving away. <gasps> oh! Part of the, I think they're part of the giveaways for um, for people who buy things, right? He likes awesome. to awesome. stuff in. Let's see. So this is yeah, my my antique block is uh is in millimeters. So these are three and a half millimeters. This looks like it's about three two, millimeters or one eighth. So these are about one eighth. And then these. See, let me get my uh digital caliper, and then I can tell you for sure. Yeah, these are I four millimeters. My, I don't have my my reading glasses on so i can't read the vernier caliper that well yeah, yeah so these, these are, are this is 3.1 these little pegs are 3.1 millimeters so that may be an eighth let me look at my chart yeah it's an eighth of an inch uh, is that what it is so that's probably what's going on is that um yeah that that these the holes in this one were designed to be an eighth of an inch. So that would be an eighth, one eighth inch. Right. Um, either, I mean, if you got brass rod, then it's even- Or an old drill bit. Yeah. Yeah, old drill bit, yep. Yeah, so there's um, lots, yeah, of, yeah. lots of solutions for adding pins. You can yep, be exactly. So yeah, so I mean, I have managed not to lose the four pins that came with this one, but frequently one does, or, you know, sometimes you can buy these, you'll see these at like swap meets and stuff and you can buy them and then they won't have any pins and you'll be like, well, what use are they? It's like, go to the hardware store, get some one eighth inch rod. Yeah. Brass rod, super easy. Yeah. Just put it into chunks or even yeah. the, the, you know, and I can't, off. you know, mine, because it has the thermal <laughs> plastic, I can't see. Does yours have screw holes in it too? Uh, and I think maybe like the thingamajig, thing where you're doing the wire jig those might be eight inch pegs yeah. as well i this does not look yeah. like it has any screw holes this i believe is is just aluminum so mm -hmm. it's pretty soft so i think the idea is just you know because they're not very heavy i think right. your the steel of that smaller block makes more sense to have it be threaded yeah right? so mine's anyway. steel i don't know why i just put my hand up there <laughs> go away yeah mine's yeah. steel this Waving one's around steel. this one's steel not aluminum is it yeah yeah i'd have to put a magnet on this and see let's see but there you go so there you go that's what all those yeah no mine's are. mine's not magnetic and it doesn't look like it's stainless steel it looks very much to me like it's uh aluminum, aluminum. you know probably heavy which is fine right there's nothing wrong with that yeah aluminum soft very good. Not very heavy. Well, cool. Well, ladies, I want to say um, uh, thank you. Um, Absolutely. For another wonderful year. I'm, I'm very thankful for you both and thankful that we get to do this together and that we get to share our love and passion of what we do with other people. I think I'm incredibly lucky to be able to do that. And I love having so many uh, amazing uh, students and fans and tool makers and you know everybody that has been so supportive over the last couple of years um and this year has been you know really amazing so so thank you to all of you that have supported us and um and have shared your ideas and pictures and creativity with us it's been amazing so i wish everybody a happy thanksgiving and Indeed. 
And I'm very thankful for you both. Likewise. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. So happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah. I hope everybody will have a fun one and take some time to, yeah, just if you need a break from the family, I think you were talking about this the other day. If you need a break from the family during the holidays, <laughs> we've got open studio access in December. It's free. You can think of it as group therapy if you want. <laughs> you, can, you can be like, oh, look at the time. I've got to go do open studio. <laughs> so feel Absolutely. Free. We're there for you. <laughs> yep. We're, we're here for you. So um, so December uh, open studio access is free. Just go to the website and sign up. And we three, have a, three seats left. We have a few seats left. Yeah. So we're looking forward to seeing everybody then. And we have a really fun holiday brunch coming up on December 17th. Right. Um, right. That's going to be a big fundraiser that we're really excited about for Toolbox Initiative. So we'll have a couple of different ways to donate uh, to that. And we're looking forward to seeing everybody then as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Come and join Bye. us. Come and hang out with us. Make some Christmas gifts in open studio. Absolutely. Oh, and don't forget Nisa Blackman's I, class in yeah. December. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Yes, absolutely. So we have we some. Still have, there's still room in that class. Um, yeah. So those are those are filling up. We, too. Have, we have four seats left in that class. Oh, wow. Oh yeah. my gosh. Okay, great. Yeah. So and, jump on it, people. and if you're not sure what to get, get a gift card. <laughs> yes, we have gift cards. Yeah. Just let your loved ones know that you want to take a few classes and yeah, gift cards, gift cards work. <laughs> so yeah, we hope to see you there. All right, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving and we will